And so what is the, I want to go into the product a little bit and kind of what's the, what's it look like? What, what does it do? What are kind of the big differentiators? Yeah. So when identifying what hardware we were going to develop to make this, you know, this instrument that was going to be the best in the world for solid sample analysis, we knew it had to be able to be lower cost um, than buying three instruments, which was an easy bill to fit. Uh, it had to be able to sit onto a desktop. It needed to be touchscreen and it needed to be one power cord out the back. No complexity. You don't need a clean lab environment. And so what we netted out on and what we invented and, and created all of our technology around is this idea of using two lasers. So we have a three inch by three inch sample tray that you can put anything that's solid and flat on, right? Loaded into our chamber. Um, it basically takes an image of the entire stage. You use that to navigate around with, and you're just selecting points of where you want to analyze. And at every point, what's going to happen is a primary laser is going to come down and ablate a little bit of material. You can think of it like, you know, when you drill cement and it makes a dust cloud, we're kind of doing that with light. So we're focusing light really intensely and removing a little bit of material. Oh yeah, you, you know all about this. It's similar to like, 3D metal printing, but instead of like melting, you're like vaporizing. So sure. UV instead of infrared, you're just kind of like breaking apart all these atoms. And so you have this neutral particle cloud that's formed uh, above the surface. And a lot of techniques had stopped in the past because when you make this ablation, and you've probably seen this as well, you get this little plasma that forms. Um, and a lot of uh, other techniques would utilize this plasma either by looking at the spectrum emission of the plasma, like we do for stars or something like that, and looking at the elements that way, or by taking those uh, primary ions from the plasma and putting those into a mass spec. And the difficulty was it's really good qualitatively to say what's in something like, hey, there's definitely sodium in there. Um, but it's very difficult to say there's 10 parts per million sodium in there. And then it, it's even harder if you have materials that aren't perfectly matrix matched. So quantitation just became really, really difficult and it's why it didn't industrialize. Well, what we said was that neutral particle cloud that's formed is much more stoichiometrically representative of the solid it came from than that plasma is because that plasma is a very energy limited environment and you end up in this multivariate space. So let's, let's look at this neutral particle cloud. So then we take a secondary laser, which is another UV laser, and we're just blasting it with tons of power. And what happens is you end up doing a process called multi-photon ionization, basically just two photons of light excite an electron twice. So gets excited, moves up an energy level, gets excited again. And now it's far enough away from that nucleus that it's effectively separated. You've created an uh, ion pair, ion electron pair. And so that's what we use to, to make our ions. And we're, we're, we're getting our ions from a, a better source of material. And we're also flooding the ionization process locally there. And what that helps us with is that kind of matrix match standardization that I briefly talked about. It means that things are going to behave more similarly than if you had one part per million nickel or one weight percent nickel in an iron. They're going to ablate very similarly. They're going to ionize very similarly. And that allows our instrument to be very linear across a lot of orders of magnitude. And the reason why this is important is that, you know, once we, we go through the time of flight mass spectrometer, we count them. We want that software experience to be so removed that you don't feel like an analytical chemist. Mm -hmm. You just feel like you're using a tool. And that means our software life is so much easier because it's like all of the mass spectrums are very clean. Um, the integrations are very easy to do. The standardization is very easy to do. So we get to deliver that experience that you're just you're just following a path. You're choosing points, you're pressing go, you're applying calibration curve, you're printing it out, you're done.